Well, hello and welcome to the December Raised Garden Bed Tours. And uh, if you follow along with our channel, you know that stuff has been happening in the raised garden beds. Uh, it is hard to believe that in December of 2023, we are having such a beautiful day. There's barely a cloud in the sky. If you saw the uh, first of these three parts, three part video tours for this month, you'll know that we started off just after the rain. And uh, so it's just a totally different world today. Uh, however, uh, well, let's talk about that in a minute. Let's go ahead and uh, get started. Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. So as I get the camera ready here to get in position, uh, notice all the red things growing around here. There's lots of red things, and I don't know if you can see red things in the background up there, uh, hint. Uh, yeah, things are really growing in the outer bed. I can barely see the screen. It is sunny out here. What on earth? It's almost 70 degrees, and uh, or actually it probably is past 70 degrees now. It's beautiful out here uh, in the raised garden bed tours in our bow tie gardens. Well, the battery just died and I had to go in and charge for a while, but I, it did get up to 73 degrees on December 9th today. Uh, however, in the time I had to go charge, I do see clouds coming up on the horizon over here. So we are coming up to our afternoon rain, uh, probably within about 90 minutes, which is way more than enough time to show you through these raised beds. Hopefully the rain will hold off, uh, but we are getting occasional high wispy clouds uh, for for, the, for this uh, big cold front that's coming through for the weekend. Um, yeah, lots of red things growing here. It's, it is very exciting. I've got to get a lot harvested today, specifically these uh, cherry tomatoes because we're going to get more rain uh, this afternoon and tonight. I don't think we're supposed to get maybe an inch of rain total, so I don't think we'll have any splitting. Nothing split uh, from last weekend's rain. I was concerned about those Roma tomatoes, but nothing split. Uh, they they just kept right on going. I'm very happy. The Roma VF is what they are from Ferry Morris. But uh, anyway, let's uh, get started. Um, I think uh, I've got a map right here that I'm that will be in the corner of the of the video. Show you exactly where we are. Uh, this is the overall property, and we are 100 feet wide and 106 feet deep. So it's uh, just right at a quarter acre property, and. Uh, I've converted a lot of it to gardens. Uh, I have a uh, personal uh, dislike for grass, and so I like to see things being more productive. And this is the first time in my life I've had a property where I could do this much. And I maybe one of these years I'll start figuring out how much food I am actually making as far as money-wise. I did do a lot more weighing this year. Next year I'll do it again and do a better job. Um, so we've we've produced almost 300 pounds of food and that's without our grapefruits and oranges and lemons which uh last year added um over 300 pounds to that total it would have doubled it if we counted last year's um citrus harvest so yeah a lot uh a lot of um a lot of produce production from this property and uh so anyway uh this this uh map here uh, we'll put in the corner and we'll have a little red circle to show you about where we're at. Uh, I, I am going to extract um, the beds in the back out. Uh, you can see here are the beds that uh, are sitting in the backyard that we pull these out of here. We put that in the corner, not the whole map. Kind of give you an idea of where we are in the raised beds. We're going to kind of go fast through these. Some places it's just dead stuff that has to get cleared out. Uh, it has been a year and I am ready to start doing the end of the year cleanup and uh, get some progress on starting for next year uh, and uh, getting beds prepared so that when it's time to plant things we're ready. So anyway first thing we're going to start at is over here at the green stock which uh, we gr grew we planted out um, oh I don't know earlier this year in the spring maybe and uh, we had some basil in here and some other things, but uh, now we've got strawberries and lots of brassicas. First off down here though, um, here is some uh, 
dino kale in these bottom two uh, containers. I do try to turn this a little bit um, every couple few days so that a different side gets the afternoon sun. Uh, we got tons of strawberries in here. Some of these don't look so great. Some of them look better. Uh, we actually did have a strawberry being produced. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Uh, yeah, here it is, uh, right next to that lizard we just saw. Um, we did have a strawberry that didn't really come out very nice, but uh, that was kind of neat to see. Uh, you can see here we've planted uh, some of these uh, runners back in to get them to grow on the last month's tour. They're doing good. Uh, we still have some parsley in here that we need to finish harvesting. There's some, still some basil in here that's gone to seed. Uh, we've got the uh, broccoli, cauliflower, uh, and one other thing in here, and I can't remember what it is. But uh, that's generally the tour of the of the green stalk. There's cauliflower, strawberries, uh, and this is another runner that we put in a while back. Um, what does that say? Ferrell and Schluss. Uh, romaine that is not what that is um, but this here is snowball cauliflower so we did some of our fall seed starting plants and put them in here hopefully we can start getting some good stuff out of it but from there i want to turn around and start in the beginning of bed number one of course i do these in order the same order every year and uh, so that because i reference these uh quite frequently and if I'm standing in Lowe's trying to remember what kind of seed I had, uh, whatever, I can, I know exactly where in the videos I can go and I can go back to a certain point in history to see how well they did. Uh, Kajari melons. Um, it ended up, the Kajari melon that I had in this bag, um, something had eaten through the bag and into the Kajari melon. Somewhere in here there's actually a hole in the the organza bag you can see there's all kinds of flies in there now uh, but that thing has just gone that was the last hope for kajari melons uh, i don't know i might try it again i might not uh, i'm not very very happy with kajari melons right now i i, I know it's it, not no fault of the kajari melon they sound delicious uh, i just haven't had a good one yet i don't believe so uh, past the Kajari melon, and in the midst of all this dollar weed, we do have a ton of ginger. We got nine plants left in here. I did harvest um, one of the plants, which is what this big hole here is. And uh, oh, this is dollar weed root here, which is what we keep trying to pull out. But you can see the end of that ginger root right there. There's another one here. This one's gotten pretty big. Um, some of these are large. Uh, this one here is actually looking sizable, but it, we get down to our really big one, which is down here at the end. And uh, I, I just don't know. This thing is a monster. I don't know how if it's going to be good, um, but you can see it's just like absolutely taking off. It goes from all the way over here to all the way over here. Uh, it's about a foot long. There's a there's another shoot coming out of it right there. But the leaves are starting to give away, which means it's about time to harvest these. We will be harvesting these. There's a one small plant down there. That's the smallest plant I've got. Um, we will be harvesting these. We will be dehydrating them. We'll give some away and uh, um, save plenty to grow for next year. I am, there's 10, there were 10, plants in here which I was very happy with however I wish I had planted them farther over to the other side so I could grow a row a whole row of turmeric here which we have coming up here in a little bit we're going to pull that here in just a few minutes once we get past bed number one uh, the cucumber plants here uh, are just long gone uh, which is it's it's past their season so I'm just fine with that we did not get any more cucumbers out of this since the last garden tour so a lot of, okay, so blackberries, blackberries, tons of blackberries in here. And I have let these blackberries take off. And these vines are enormous. In fact, this one vine right here is 24 feet long, at least. Uh, this bed is 24 feet long up to where they're rooted in. And uh, it goes up as well. So it might be 28 feet long. It's very, very long. And... Uh, 
So I am just letting these blackberries go. They're actually going across the okra bed over there just to let them grow out and get as much headway as they can. Uh, come next year, I may cut some of these back to try to keep them in control. But uh, for now, I'm gonna let them go. And look how thick they are right in here. Now this was a uh, cucumber uh, arbor in the spring. Uh, yeah, last in the past year. Yeah, in the spring. I think it was planted in the end of the spring, and it did very well for us. We got lots of cucumbers off this. Uh, this and however, this one over here was the fall planting that Emerson helped plant. My grandson. You can see there's one final female flower on there. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, those are are long past their prime, which is no, no worry is what they're supposed to do. Okay, so let's look at the okra orchard, the okra grove, the okra forest over there. From the, I'm gonna go over to the other side. So here we are at the okra forest. They're huge, in fact, you can see down at the end over there, tallest one, it's enormous. It is huge. So what I wanted to do real quick is, just like we did with the sun chokes in the first one, I want to measure how tall the uh, okra got this year because, uh, yeah, it's big. And I couldn't get, I don't think I can get it cut with my uh, hand trimmers because that thing's about as big as my arm, my wrist. So <laughs> I'm going to try a little more aggressive approach to it. So <laughs> here we go. So just by way of reminder, we measured these in November garden tour of last year, and uh, they came out to 17 feet. So we put the tape measure here, pretty much the end of the tallest ones. On the, on the uh, pods though, you can see like this one here, see how it's opening up already? Those seeds are ready to harvest. In fact, a couple have been either picked out by birds or uh, fell on the ground somewhere, but I'm not worried about that because I'm gonna be growing okra here in the same place. However, so 17 feet last year and just under 13 feet this year. So not quite as tall. I didn't think it was going to be. I'm not sure why, but uh, I'm happy. It's still way taller than any okra plant that I've ever seen outside of my yard. So basically all these pods that we would have eaten, we let grow and the seeds we can dry out and plant for next year. And we will have next year's crop of okra from these which means we don't have to buy seeds again but look at how full let me see if i can open one of these up look how full of seeds these things are can you see all of them in there so yeah lots of seeds that we'll have for next year's crops looking up there i can see a lot of these other seed pods have already started opening up in fact like these right here. I don't know if you can quite see. Let me see if I can zoom in on those a little bit. You can see they've opened up a little bit. Birds will be picking at those. And we need to get them harvested for seeds because that's all we need out of these okra at this point. However, I do see, look at this. This looks kind of fresh. Uh, I wonder if it's woody. Oh, it's already woody. Never mind. Sometimes you, you get a late grower. This is just one little plant that's grown down here late from something. I don't know what, but obviously not any good. So that, that would have been a surprise. But you can see we got blackberries growing across here. Look at their blackberry vines growing across. I'm gonna let those go. We'll be slipping cardboard in here after we cut all the okra out. I will be leaving the rootstock of the okra uh, simply because it will become organic matter in this bed. 
I will be topping off these beds on top of the cardboard. So uh, there'll be some work to do on these, of course. Coming across here past the uh, okra, we have a couple of Brussels sprouts, a couple of, or a, and a cauliflower and a broccoli. I don't know which is which. I just threw these out here one day. Uh, it's going to be a surprise. And I think these two might be the Brussels sprouts. That's the cauliflower. This is the broccoli. I don't know. I have to see how close I get. Uh, they do still have the sleeves on. I will be taking those sleeves off pretty soon. And uh, I did mulch it pretty good. Uh, but you can see this dollar weed is just way too aggressive of a plant um, for just a little bit of mulching on top. They, they grow out everywhere. It's an amazingly uh, aggressive plant. So look, again, this is the other side of that blackberry that we saw from inside this arch trellis. Past bed number one, we get over to what we're still calling the peach tree. I'm beginning to doubt it. I don't know what it is. We'll have to see if it's going to last, if it's going to survive. We come down to the next little part here and we have turmeric. So when I was building these raised beds, I discovered that the previous owner had grown turmeric and I discovered a turmeric plant. And so I planted that first year, uh, one of the fingers. And after that, I harvested the fingers the second year. This is the, this is the end of the second year. You can see the leaves are turning. It's really kind of time to harvest this. It grows in these little fingers down there. Let's just see what we get. Uh, see if I can ease this thing out of here. Uh, I'm hoping we have some decent fingers in here. Well, it's not an overwhelming one, but there is some more turmeric in here. Uh, yeah. It's going to be enough. See, there's a good finger right there. You can barely see it in the dirt. There's a good one over there. We might only have two or three. I'm going to plant all of this, though, in the hopes of getting uh, something to plant for next year. I'm going to feel around in here, and I don't feel anything. Doggone it. I was hoping to have more in there. Well, that's going to be all I get. This is very orange stuff. I don't want to get into it too much because it'll stain my fingers. Um, normally these things should be a lot longer. So this is a little disappointing. Um, I did not have it in a good spot. It languished. I will be putting it over here with the ginger. Uh, it needs more watering, which is what it'll get over here. So uh, that's what I have of the turmeric that we are going to try to rescue. Past the now gone turmeric, and turmeric does need more water. So I, I really messed that up. I didn't really pay much attention to what I was supposed to do with it yet. And uh, we lost that crop, unfortunately. So on past that, we get into bed number two. Of course, we had cucumbers over here on this side. We had a great year of cucumbers again and uh, pickled a whole bunch and gave away a whole bunch. So uh, I am very happy with our results. I did end up cutting some of those plants. I th No, maybe I didn't. Um, I don't see any more cucumbers growing in there, which is no surprise. We do have some three dino kale plants right here that I'm very happy with. I've actually been harvesting occasional leaves off the bottom with our cool weather. They're starting to taste pretty good. Uh, yeah, so I've, I've enjoyed having our dino kale back. And this thing, it's a biennial crop, which means it'll grow two years. First year, it'll grow good stuff. And then uh, hopefully it'll last until 2025 when it'll start to seed itself. And this time... I had a one left over from the previous owner and I messed it up. But hopefully this time I'll remember to let it grow, go to seed and collect those seeds when they're ready to go. Uh, do love dino kale. I, I've never been a fan of kale, but uh, dino kale is pretty good stuff. I don't know if it's just because I'm getting older or if it's that much better. I heard uh, Jesse over at um, Roots and Refuge say, uh, Jesse, Jessica, Jess, over at Roots and Refuge say that... Uh, if you want to try a kale, if you have a light kale, then go for a dino, try dino kale. And what you do is you pull off a leaf, you peel off the fleshy, get the stem out, and then I just roll it up and stick it in my mouth. I love it. Okay, so in bed number two, we also have the bean wall. And let me tell you something. The bean wall has been making beans like I have not seen before. These are monster-sized beans um, that I didn't realize this thing would get that big. Uh, look up here at this one. Here's a big old bean. There's another one on the other side over there. 
check this out. This thing is longer than my hand. Big old fat thing, almost as big as my pinky. Uh, yeah, enormous. Now I'm leaving these to go to seed. I will collect seeds from these and we'll have plenty of seed for next year. In fact, I will not just have plenty, I will have an abundance. Um, more beans here, ton of beans going here. Uh, the smallest one over here probably will not develop, but I will only be collecting the biggest of these. And you saw the beans in the front yard. Uh, I think there's one seed gonna come out of that front um, yard arch trellis of beans. So yeah, this is where my seed stock for next year. Let me show you what's on the other side. There's another big one over there. So yeah, just good seed beans developing out here all over there's a there was a couple up there the birds may have gotten some uh, i did leave i left something up there somewhere i can't remember but there's those big ones we just looked at the big three right there they're enormous enormous um oh yeah i see up there on the other side uh there's one there i think i may have left another one or two up there to develop but we've got all the beans we need for the season so now they are going to seed. So we have down here next to the bean, and this year, last year I had the beans in the middle and tomatoes on both sides. It was too much for this bed. I got beans on one side, and uh, well, I got peppers on this side, but I could have done tomatoes just as easily. Um, I, uh, these peppers over here have grown beautifully. There's a, there is this uh, um, pepidou here. I mean, look at these things. This plant is finally starting to produce. Uh, which is just wonderful. Um, there's more back over here from this same plant. Uh, this was a basil plant, which is long gone. Uh, there's one, see that yellow flower down there? That is the last of the uh, marigolds. There's a marigold plant that was down in there. That is coming to the end of its season. Uh, some Thai hots, remember Thai hots, you can tell the di from dragon cayenne, they look exactly the same. In fact, you can see here, Here's dragon cayenne and tie hot. Tie hots are sticking straight up. Dragon cayennes are hanging down. And we've got a dragon cayenne, a tie hot, another dragon cayenne hanging back here, and a tie hot. And I have not harvested much of these um, because I have just harvested so many peppers this year. It has been overwhelming. Uh, the one thing I am harvesting still is these pepidus. Um, these are, we just, we discovered these on the, on a cruise a while back at the very, very fancy restaurant and the chef came out and told us what they were. And then I saw the same chef, um, a few months ago as we went on another cruise and, uh, told him I had grown his, uh, peppers. He was so excited. In fact, he, the friends we were cruising with, he, uh, he brought out a big bowl of them for us to eat and we enjoyed them. They do have some spice. Uh, I, they say they're a little bit cooler than jalapenos. Mine have been about the same as jalapenos. They are pretty spicy, um, but very tasty. They have a great, great flavor to them. So I'm going to skip over the obvious, uh, well, let's talk about the Everglades tomatoes, which is what's on this side. I know everything on this side is Everglades tomatoes. And this thing is pro Lithic. In fact, I'm going to have to do something special uh, for these next year because these are just oh, amazing tomatoes. Prolific producer. Very tasty, very juicy. I'm going to stop right here because the other side I think is super sweet 100. But we are getting down to the end of the season. Look how thick this is. But even here you can see there's little bits of red over there all through here. I do need to come in and harvest another uh, couple few pounds of these. Uh, they're still all out in the grass. I've left them when they're green. I've left them until I'm ready to pick them, which good grief, we have a ton of tomatoes this year. Mrs. Bowtie is going to have a lot of pasta sauce to put out. Yes, we're using these for pasta sauce. Um, I will be making a video on that and I'll link to the one who taught it to me. But uh, you can see there's just all those red things in there are cherry tomatoes. Yum. All through there. There's still some green ones in there and there's still some buds in there. In fact, let me climb up on the wall here. This is the end of bed number two, of course. 
I'm going to climb up onto the wall. This is one of the reasons why I like these uh, big bricks on these walls, because you can step on them. Grab a trellis to lift yourself up and look, just look at all the cherry tomatoes just all through here. Can you see those? Dozens of them, dozens and dozens and dozens of them. So anyway, let me see if I can get down here without falling. Ugh. And yes, I've stepped on some from time to time, but that's been a fun discovery is the Everglades tomatoes that I bought from uh, the daughter of Dave the Good. So past the Everglades tomatoes in bed two, in fact, even in the Everglades tomatoes, uh, is our aloe patch. Huge aloe plants in here. These things are growing enormous. I'm hoping that next year these will grow but flowers because these things are beautiful. We didn't get any this year because of the freeze from last Christmas, but uh, they are getting big enough. I'm hoping that next year they will develop into budding aloe. And of course you can see in the background, we are coming up to the beginning of bed number three, which if you've been watching my channel much at all, you know that bed number three starts with this enormous pepper patch hot chilies all over. We have Tabasco, we have Fatale, we have Scotch Bonnets, we have more Fatale, we have Peri Peri, we have even more Fatale. Under there, we've got Habanero, those orange things over yonder. And this has just been a tremendous, tremendous harvest this year. Um, dozens of pounds of peppers out of this thing. Uh, this, this Tabasco, I have harvested so many off this Tabasco and yet there's so many left. Uh, these Fatale, just tons and tons of Fatale uh, through here. And it's all incorporated with Scotch Bonnet. It's, it's not the same plant. They are, they're not grafted or anything. Wait a minute, what is going on here? Um, oh, ha, <laughs> I thought we had Scotch Bonnet and uh, Tally on the same plant. I was wrong. We have Scotch Bonnet here and we have a separate Fatale plant up here. Okay. Okay. No cross pollination or anything. Uh, yeah. Just, just, just crazy, crazy, crazy growth. Here's even more jalapeno down here. This is the jalapeno traveler, which I'm probably going to be discontinuing this year for something larger. Uh, these Tabascos are just so ready. Look at that. It just pops right off the plant. These red ones, watch this, just barely. Give it a tug and it comes right off. I did bring a harvest bucket out. Another one after we cut down the okra. But you can see if I lift this back a little bit, there are, there's more scotch bonnet under there. Scotch bonnet is the Jamaican spicy pepper, spicy chili. Uh, Fatale, tons and tons and tons of Fatale as far as the eye can see. This is the, one of the first hottest peppers I grew. Uh, and uh, it's got almost a flowery flavor to it. Uh, there is some peri-peri growing out of the middle here. Um, There's this red one here. Uh, there is actually three Scotch bonnet plants here. A Fatale, which is this enormous, in fact, you look down here at the bottom, at this, the base of this tree, this triple trunk of Fatale peppers. Just enormous, enormous. And incidentally, this died off at Christmas. So um, it, it died off. I just cut down to the ground and they all grew back. Over here, we have a peri-peri. Uh, we still have a shishito over here that we have not been eating due to the faded erroneous harvest. Go back and watch that video, find that video. Uh, it was my mistake and Mrs. Bowtie is still suffering from it. So now you'll notice there is a eight foot cattle panel here. Uh, and there's another one up under there. And what's going to happen here? We're getting into our cold weather. I need to harvest as many peppers as I want off of here. Then I'm going to be cutting all these branches down below this trellis so that I can put the plastic back over it. And we are going to overwinter these again. We overwintered these last year when we had 18 degrees Fahrenheit, which is something like 8 or 9 degrees Celsius. Uh, and I'm sorry, minus eight or nine degrees Celsius. And um, I'm feeling pretty confident that we're not gonna have that cold a temperature this year. And we are going to have peppers galore next year, which will be very exciting. These are habaneros in here. 
Uh, tons of habaneros coming through, these orange ones. Just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful peppers. Uh, habaneros are not as prolific as the, like the Fatale is just crazy prolific. Crazy, crazy prolific. Look at all this over here. My goodness. Just dozens and dozens and dozens of chili peppers of despair. <laughs> They're pretty hot. They're about 300,000 on the Scoville scale. Um, I am looking down at my, what is that? That is a cauliflower uh, and the leaves have been eaten off. Doggone it. The leaves have been eaten off my cauliflower, just bitten right off. Well, that collar didn't do much good. Maybe it was a bad idea to put it underneath that plant. That plant's gonna be trimmed back here pretty soon. Uh, this one looks good. This one hadn't been touched. So if you know what is eating my cauliflower, uh, please put in the comments below. I have to get over there and look at that. In fact, let's go over there and take a look. Is there anything under the leaves? I don't see anything under the leaves. These leaves have been just bitten off. That top has been bitten off. Huh. Interesting. Okay, well, one cauliflower may be down. Uh, of course, this is the zucchini black, zucchini dark, not uh, not, I'm um, sorry, black. Zucchini black, not black beauty, just zucchini black. Uh, there is a garlic left over here. I think this is probably an elephant garlic. Um, I think I've got three elephant garlic cloves left in there. But, uh, oh, this one has something been beaten off of it too. Hmm. Okay, and there's, I see another leaf being bitten off. Please tell me if you know what that is. Okay, the rest of the tomatoes. We have our Roma tomatoes here. We have harvested a couple few of these. Uh, you can see inside the organza bag, these things are starting to, to uh, ooh, that one's starting to split a little bit. I need to go ahead and harvest that one. Uh, they are starting to blush inside the organza bag. I need to get those blushing ones harvested soon, especially with all this rain coming tonight. But look at all, the Roma tomatoes in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, with uh, probably an average of uh, two uh, Romas per bag. Some of them have three. You can see here, this one has four in it. Uh, this one has one, His, this has two. So probably 50 Roma tomatoes in bags here. And I will be, once the cold is really passed, in fact, you can see here the weather, our forecast, uh, is supposed to start getting cold. And uh, this is actually not ours, this is inland. Our weather will be far more milder, probably about five or 10 degrees, uh, well, not 10, but probably over five degrees milder. So they'll be slightly warmer, uh, a little bit better. Um, over here in the tomatoes at the end of bed number three, of course, I'm pretty sure this is all um, super sweet 100s. Uh, they are tasty. We have harvested a ton and you can see there's a ton that's ready up in here. So they're cherry tomatoes, so they produce rapidly. Mm. Definite super sweet 100. Wow. Check out all these tomatoes growing in there. Tons and tons. Just so many beautiful cherry tomatoes. Which just doesn't really seem so amazing until you realize this is December 9th. I see one split right there. Yeah, gotta get some of these harvested before the rains start because uh, this is gonna really wanna make them split. Mmm, so delicious though. There is a goji bush hidden underneath this tomato plant, which is gonna be fine. Mmm, so good. But uh, yeah, tons and tons of tomatoes in December. We've harvested probably, mm, maybe eight pounds, I think it is, eight or nine pounds in the past uh, month since the last tour of tomatoes. Wow. Even though I'm just tired of harvesting peppers, it's so exciting to see these things still growing like this. In fact, I may have to 
uh, pick a bag full of these for my neighbor who's going to be coming home here in a couple days. But uh, oh wow, just tons and tons of of peppers and of course the tomato arch trellis up there that uh, is just dotted with little red uh, tomatoes everywhere up there. You can see them just so prolifically all over. But uh, that's that excites me to no end. Uh, makes me very happy. Um, so I'll be uh, probably putting out another, at least a short on the, on the next harvest of uh, tomatoes. The uh, sun has started to disappear behind clouds. We are probably about an hour away from rain, which means we are coming down to the very end. I am sitting on something. Oh, it's just a stick. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so. Oh, there is one thing I wanted to tell you. I'm, I have decided I'm gonna clear out the beans here in a week or so, and I'm gonna get the garlic planted on the other side of that trellis. There's a space about so wide that I'm gonna plant a row of garlic going the whole length of that bed. And we're trying a new place for garlic this year. So that will be, that will be something co completely different for this coming year. Uh, garlic you plant in the fall, that it needs to stay over the winter, and then it'll, it'll bulb up in the spring. And uh, yeah, that's how garlic grows. Um, but anyway, for those of you who have subscribed, thank you so much for subscribing. Um, you have helped get the channel to where it is. We are approaching, we are rapidly approaching our first major milestone. And uh, I'm very excited about that. Those of you who have not yet subscribed, please join the others and, and hit that subscribe button. Uh, it is highly appreciated and, and your support is is uh, just, uh, it makes me feel great that we can, we can grow this channel to a point where maybe we can start getting even bigger. Um, if you think thought this is at all uh, informational, educational, inspirational, or entertaining, please click the thumbs up uh, on this video and share it with uh, your friends on social media that might also be gardeners and interested in gardening. Uh, lots of stuff going on out here and uh, it is my own personal log, I know, but um, it, I know some of these have encouraged someone else to try something different and, and something new and grow, try growing this plant instead of that plant and uh, hopefully uh, become better gardeners. So uh, happy to share, happy to have guests along with me. Uh, frequently, I, I, I do give people tours of my garden in real life. They come here and I'll show them around and show them what all is going on and they ask questions and sometimes they're here to ask about certain things. Uh, I've had people ask about the aloe. I've had people ask about the, the strawberries that I grow, um, uh, you know, the, the cucumbers and tomatoes, all kinds of stuff. It's uh, it, stuff that I'm learning to grow. We are ending our fourth year of growing. We'll be starting, I can't believe I'm starting my fifth year of growing in just a couple few months. That is coming right up and uh, so, we're we're learning we're learning together anyway i hope god blesses your garden too have a blessed day